So we know that Newton's second law of motion says that the net force acting on a particle is equal to the product of its mass and the acceleration induced by the force or it is equal to dp upon dt where p is the linear momentum of the particle. So the question is the way we draw analogy of most angular variables with linear variables can we draw a similar analogy over here and if this is true what we can say is that the net torque acting on the particle should equal to dl upon dt or essentially what we are saying is that the vector sum of all torques acting on a particle should equal to the time rate of change of momentum of a particle. So let us go ahead and test whether this equation we've written over here is true or not. So to start with, we know that the angular momentum of a particle is equal to the cross product of its position vector into its linear momentum. And we must remember that the angular momentum L is being taken about an axis and so is the position vector, it's about an axis. So we can write this as a cross product of R with MV. And this in turn is equal to MR cross V. Now going ahead, I'll be dropping these arrows because it's a little inconvenient, but you must assume that these are all vector calculations we're doing. These are all vector derivations. So we can say that if L is equal to M, r cross v so if you take the first time derivative of l on the left hand side you'll get dl upon dt and the right hand side would equal to m into r cross dv upon dt now let me remind you i have not put the arrow on top of these letters r or v but these are vectors i've dropped the arrows just for my convenience plus dr upon dt cross v and if we simplify this what we get is dl upon dt is equal to m times r cross a because dv upon dt is nothing but linear acceleration plus dr upon dt we know is vector v or velocity and this expression becomes v cross v which we know would be zero because cross product of a vector with itself is zero because the angle between them is zero and sine of zero is equal to zero. So we can write dl upon dt is therefore equal to m into r cross a with the second expression becoming zero and this therefore can be rewritten as the cross product of r with m a and let me introduce the vector signs over here to be accurate and correct and what we can see is therefore dl upon dt is equal to the vector product of r with the net force acting on the particle because m into a is nothing but the net force on the particle which can be rewritten as in, in a simpler way, we can write it as sigma of r vector with vector f. And there's nothing but the summation of all cross products of r with various forces acting on the particle. And we'll suddenly realize that r cross f is nothing but torque. So this can be equated to sigma torque. And that's what we get. Sigma torque is nothing but the summation of all torques acting on the particle or it can be called as torque net so we can write therefore dl upon dt is equal to sigma t or we can write torque net is equal to dl upon dt and that's what we wanted to establish over here so it is indeed true that you can draw an analogy for net torque being equal to dl upon dt just the way we have net force is equal to dp upon dt.